All right, thanks for coming this morning. Um, Ken Caldera is a scientist at the Carnegie Institution Department of Global Ecology and a professor by courtesy at the Stanford University Department of Environmental and Earth System Sciences. Previously, he worked for 12 years in the Energy Environment Directorate at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. And his diverse research interests include numerical simulation of Earth's climate, carbon, and biogeochemistry, ocean acidification, climate emergency response systems, evaluating approaches to supplying environmentally friendly energy services, ocean carbon sequestration, and long-term evolution of climate and geochemical cycles. Ken has a BA in philosophy from Rutgers College and an MS and PhD in atmospheric sciences from NYU. Uh, so without further ado, Ken, thanks. Thank you, Kevin. So today I'm going to speak about geoengineering Earth's climate. Uh, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. But you know, an alternate uh, title and perhaps the topic of my talk is this question of, is it time to start working on a climate emergency response system? That uh, you know, we hear a lot about the threat that there might be some kind of climate catastrophe or climate emergency where that's poorly defined uh, and different people have their own ideas of what would constitute an emergency. But, uh, you know, I would just suggest that it's time for us to start thinking about what we would do if something goes seriously wrong with our climate system. Uh, one of the things that leads me to be interested in this kind of work is uh, the record of, or the record of our carbon dioxide emissions. And what you see on this figure is uh, a number of the major IPCC carbon dioxide emission scenarios developed in the 1990s overlaying with two estimates of uh, actual carbon dioxide emissions. And what we see is uh, that carbon dioxide emissions today are at or above the emission rates uh, foreseen in the most pessimistic of the IPCC scenarios. And that over the past few years, CO2 emissions have been rising much more rapidly than uh, in any of these scenarios. And there are several reasons why this is happening. One is the high price of uh, oil is pushing people towards coal, which is much more carbon emission per unit uh, uh, energy derived. And then also the rapid development of China and India and other countries are uh, making CO2 emissions rise very rapidly. The I mean, the, the subject of this talk is not the scale of the effort needed to transform our energy system, uh, but suffice to say that uh, it's a truly a Herculean task, which we could do if we set about doing it as a society, but at least as indicated by carbon dioxide emissions so far that we've, we've done essentially nothing effective to uh, reverse the increasing CO2 content. Uh, also, as we know, that sea ice is disappearing rapidly. Uh, a number of other uh, indicators that climate is changing very rapidly, uh, uh, are, you know, are, are presenting themselves. And, and so, while it would be nice if we would reduce and eliminate carbon dioxide emissions as soon as possible that we don't seem to be doing uh, this. And so we might think about, well, what do we do if our efforts to reduce carbon dioxide emissions don't uh, avoid dangerous interference with the climate system? So you know, I've been in this business long enough that I remember when people used to show maps of uh, what kinds of temperature changes might occur from a doubling of atmospheric carbon dioxide content. And people used to present, present these uh, figures as, oh, this is how bad things could be if we don't uh, wise up soon. And really, we've gotten to the point where we're showing these kind of maps and saying, well, this is how good things could be if we work really hard to transform our energy system. Because to get much below a doubling of CO2 would really, uh, I mean, we can do it, but we really would need to more or less stop making carbon dioxide emitting devices as soon as possible. So you know, what are the strategies to stabilize climate, or, or at least uh, okay, to stabilize climate? And we could think of four major categories. One is to diminish end-use energy demand. And that basically means 
uh, either improving efficiency or having sectoral shifts so that we uh, sort of use, uh, you know, start uh, using books instead of riding four-wheel drives through the deserts or something, or, uh, or just conserve and do with less. The next major category is to produce energy without carbon dioxide emission. This could be renewable energy sources or perhaps nuclear sources. And then there's the idea of actively removing carbon dioxide and other gases from the atmosphere. But these three uh, methods all affect the amount of heat radiation that escapes from the Earth's surface to space. And an alternate approach is to reduce the amount of sunlight absorbed by the Earth. And the basic idea is that the Earth is heated by the sun and then it cools off by radiating that energy to space as long wave heat radiation. And so if the Earth is having more difficulty radiating out to space, well, one way to compensate that is to reduce the amount of sunlight that the Earth absorbs. And so in the context of this talk, other people have different definitions. I'm going to uh, use geoengineering to refer to the intentional uh, large-scale manipulation of Earth's radiation balance. And more particularly, I'm going to focus on the intentional uh, large-scale effort to reduce the absorption of sunlight by the Earth. And so there are a few different uh, schemes that have been proposed. Uh, here's a little picture of uh, the sun and the Earth revolving around the sun. And there's uh, a mark there marked as L1 uh, over here. It's marked by the X. And that's a point at which the gravitational uh, forces of the sun and the Earth are balanced when you also take into account the apparent centrifugal forces and so on. So a, something placed at this L1 point is, uh, is, uh, is neither pulled towards the sun nor the Earth, although it's an unstable saddle, you know, an unstable steady, steady state, so you would need some controls to keep things there, but it wouldn't take large amounts of energy. So, so one idea is to basically block the sun by putting uh, sa satellites or reflectors or deflectors a million miles out in space between the Earth and the sun. Uh, what I think is a more practical idea is that putting uh, particles in the stratosphere to deflect sunlight back to space. And people have also suggested uh, putting um, whitening clouds over the ocean and then well, it might not fit with the large scale idea. The idea is you could also lighten the Earth's surface by, say, making roofs wider or uh, making roads wider. And all these things would help to cool the Earth. But what's the scale of what we're talking about? That each doubling of CO2 in the atmosphere, so if you take the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and you double that, uh, that that prevents about instantaneously prevents about two times 10 to the 15th watts of energy from escaping to space. Now, just uh, to, for a comparison, right now um, we're using more or less the human civilization is using something like 15 times 10 to the 12th watts. So, if we call that two times 10 to the 12th watts, is something the amount of energy used by a, a civilization is less than one one thousandth of what uh, the amount of energy trapped by a doubling of CO2 content in the atmosphere. The, uh, in contrast, the Earth is absorbing over 10 to the 17th watts uh, at any given time. And so if we just divide these two numbers, we'd say that if we wanted to have the Earth absorb roughly 2 times 10 to the 15th watts less energy, we would need to deflect about 1.7% of the sunlight coming into the Earth. And uh, okay, and so now that the Earth happens to be a big place. Uh, and so if, if, you, if you said um, that we're going to do this in the stratosphere, and so then you need to, cut, to, to block 1.7% of the whole spherical area of the Earth, this ends up being eight and a half million square kilometers. So you could think of this as if this was a patch a thousand by a thousand kilometers on the side, you'd need to block eight and a half of those, which is pretty big. Uh, 